In this lesson, we will study about dynamic arrays. We will see how it is different from static arrays that we have seen so far. And uh, in the further lesson, we will uh, compare the time complexity of different operations on dynamic arrays. And then later, we will also implement dynamic arrays using C++. So let's see what is a static array first. So this we have already seen. A static array is of fixed length, that is, it cannot be resized. So when, once we define an array of some size, so in this case the length is 4. So we will, let's say it's an array of integers. So we will write like this or initialize with some value 0. Then we can only insert or update the, these four values and not more. So what happens? We can insert 10. So at first place. So you can also write index and the way to do is like this ARR 0 equal to 10. In C++ I am talking about. Then we can insert three more elements 20, 30, 40. Now you will see that this array is completely full. So its capacity was 4, its length was 4. Now we have four elements in it we can update one of the elements. Let's say I want to update third element. So we can write uh, ARR2 equal to let's say 70. Now this will be 70. But we can have only four elements. And again, these are the indices 0, 1, 2 and 3. But if we insert 50, that is, if we want to insert 50 at some index 4, that is at fifth place, then this is not allowed. Its length cannot be resized. So this is the limitation of static array. Now let's see how dynamic array solves this problem. So dynamic array resizes according to input. So if we are inserting, uh, let's say we initialize uh, a dynamic array. So we can create a class and we can name it dynamic array. So uh, the user should not uh, worry about what's going underneath this class, how it is implemented. And we will do it as an exercise in later lessons also. So what interface it should uh, give to the user? It should give one method for inserting, one for updating, one for deleting. And forget about what is the size. That dynamic array class would take care of itself. So one of the ways to do is that, let's start with some default size, let's say 4. So if the user inserts less than 4 time, we will keep a counter. So we start with the beginning and if user inserts 1, we will insert here, then here and we will keep track of how many elements are there. So 2. So if user queries for size, let's add size also, then we will return this 2 and not what the size is and once user inserts four elements and then inserts fifth element we know that we cannot fit here so it needs to be resized so let's see this operation and how this will behave so let's say we started with a length of four inserting 10 is fine and at this point of time size will be one and then uh, let's say the same elements insert 20 30 40 it's fine. The length is 4 and now the size is also 4. We have inserted 4 elements. Now if user inserts 5th element, can we insert here? So we had seen that uh, arrays are stored, uh, arrays store elements contiguously in memory. That is if this is at address 100 and the integer size is 4 bytes, then this will be at address 104. This will be at address 108, starting with address, so this starting point. So 100, 101, 2, 3. So starting from 100 till 103, it's the first element. Then starting 104, so 104 denotes this beginning of this block, these four bytes, 108 and 112. So these are stored in contiguous fashion but when we insert uh, a fifth element 
uh, we cannot just straight away uh, insert fifth element here and resize this array because maybe uh, while we had initialized this piece of code uh, later some other piece of uh, some other variable or something else was stored in memory starting at this location so here it's 112 13 14 15 till 115 this belongs to the array or the container that we have used for array but starting 116 there may be some other uh, variable stored or even if it's uh, starting at 118 still we cannot do it since it will require 4 bytes and we have just 2 bytes free here so what we can do we can uh, double the size of this array so this is one of the ways of doing it you can also do it like uh, every time you increase it its size by let's say 8 uh, 8 bytes 16 bytes anything but uh, a typical uh, and a more uh, popular way of uh, implementing dynamic or resizable arrays is doubling the capacity so once this capacity is consumed we double its size and once this also is filled we will again double it but we cannot just extend this part it has to be a completely new location due to the reason that we just saw that the memory beyond this point may be used by something else so uh, after copying this what happens uh, we have to copy all the elements all the existing elements to all the indices here in the beginning and then insert the next element and for the next uh, four operations uh, it will be constant time and again it's full again uh, allocate a new memory space of double the size and copy every element there and then insert that element so we will come back to this when we see the time complexity analysis so uh, here the goal is just to give you a sense of what's happening and what a typical dynamic array or resizable array looks like so here you see this was the initial length and size was 4 now when we insert this 50 it was already full so internally what we can do or what any typical implementation would do it would create a new uh, array of double the size in this case length of 8 insert this 50 here and also copy the four elements so this is not the original array original array was here and all the elements are copied to the new array and then the last one is inserted and now the size is 5 and actual length is or the capacity is 8 so I hope uh, you understand what is a dynamic array and what why is it useful it solves the problem of that uh, static thing that is once declared it cannot be resized but this dynamic array can be resized and and even there are uh, we we don't even have to implement this these are already present like if you use a vector of int let's name it vec then you don't worry about size you can just insert keep inserting it vec dot pushback i am writing the c++ syntax insert as many elements as you want maybe initially it was four uh, capacity of 4 and once you have inserted more than 4 elements it will double and keep track of everything the size and the capacity everything and uh, it also provides many other uh, APIs like you can initialize with some size so you declare size here let's say 10 and initialize it with some value let's say 0 so initially it will be of 10 and then uh, once it's full so if you know the size you can use vector you can use vector always instead of arrays just that if you know the size you initialize it with that size if you don't know the size just keep it default and don't worry about size so i hope uh, you understand it uh, we will see you in the next video thank you